All right, I think we're ready to get started. Today, our webinar is being hosted by Vault Technical Marketer Justin Weisig, who's going to give us a tour of Vault 1.2. Vault 1.2 is the latest release of the HashiCorp Vault uh, with new features such as database static credential rotation, a new way to authenticate and mint OIDC tokens, uh, tech preview of integrated Vault native storage, and for Vault Enterprise, we added a new KMIP secret, uh, server secret engine. So today, Justin is going to demo two of those features, probably the database static credential rotation and uh, preview of integrated Vault native storage. After that, we'll spend the last 15 minutes of the webinar dedicated to a live Q&A with Justin available for questions. Uh, this webinar is being recorded, so if you miss something or you want to review, You'll be able to watch it again once uh, we've finished uh, post-processing, uh, usually in one to two days after the webinar is finished. Uh, when it's ready, we'll email it out to everyone who registered. So feel free to put questions in the questions box during or after the presentation, and we'll answer them during the Q&A session at the end. So let's get started. I'll hand it off to you, Justin. Awesome, thanks, Rich. <clears throat> So I'm on the technical marketing here, uh, marketing team here at HashiCorp, and I'm excited to chat with you about a few new features we added in Vault 1.2. So the agenda for today's webinar is, I thought it would be useful to sort of go over a Vault 101, just quickly chat about what is Vault and how you'd use it. I know most of the folks on the call probably already know all this, but it sort of sets the stage for what we're gonna check out today. Uh, next, I thought we'd check out a few demos. Um, I'd much rather sort of show you what these things look like versus chatting your ear off with a few slides. So we'll spend most of the time at the command prompt and just sort of walk through the features and chat about them. Uh, finally, at the end of the webinar, as Mitch uh, mentioned, we've uh, reserved some time for sort of questions and answered, uh, questions and answers. So I think you can just use the uh, questions window here and pop those in and we'll go through them at the end. All right, so let's dive into Vault Basics for a minute. So Vault's a pretty cool tool that allows you to securely store things like passwords, certificates, API keys, tokens, et cetera. Vault's a service that sits on your network and sort of answers queries for this secret data. You can see in the diagram here, you have clients up at the top and they're chatting with Vault for things like authentication, encryption, and secrets. Um, so, um, this is sort of useful for machines wanting uh, sort of automated access to various things Vault knows about. Say when you're chatting with Vault, all the data is encrypted at rest and while it's in transit. And you can access it via a web UI, the command prompt, and also through a very complete uh, API. So before I joined Vault, I was a sysadmin for a lot of years, uh, over 10. And I worked at to like small companies all the way up to large companies. And so I sort of know the pain of this secret sprawl that sort of propagates throughout your infrastructure. You know, on my work machine, I'd have passwords to all sorts of infrastructure. Uh, I know on a lot of developer machines, they had passwords sitting either in configuration scripts or automation scripting, you know, database passwords. And it just sort of propagates throughout to all your systems. And you don't really have a central way of managing all this to know, um, you know, are the credentials being rotated? Um, what's the audit trail? Everyone's sort of managing their own workflow. So Vault can really help with this problem. And then it greatly reduces the risk of a break-in by eliminating that sort of this secret sprawl that propagates throughout your infrastructure. You can store all these secrets in a central place that's tightly controlled and has lots of auditing built in. Vault uh, can also increase the productivity of folks at your office because now everyone's using sort of a standard way of accessing and sort of rotating these credentials. Uh, so I thought we'd jump over to the demos and I'll just show you, um, there's kind of cool, two or three cool new features of Vault uh, 1.2. One is the database static credential rotation. And there's another one, uh, the RAF storage backend, which is, uh, that's sort of my personal favorite. And then we have identity tokens. Um, let me just uh, pop over to the command line here for a sec. All right, so it probably helps to set the stage here. So 
With Vault 1.2, we add a database credential rotation. And the idea of this is that, say you had a database with a username and password uh, in that database, and you wanted to rotate that credential on some sort of schedule. Maybe you need to meet some sort of regulatory compliance issue or something like that. I know for myself, uh, having done this in the past, a lot of these sort of usernames and passwords don't ever get changed because you're not really sure what's gonna break if you actually go and rotate that password. All of a sudden, some automated backup script somewhere is gonna fail because it was hitting the database. So um, this feature gives you sort of a framework for how you can do that. So let me jump over to the demo here. So what I'm gonna do is in the bottom panel here, I'm gonna set up, uh, I'll just show you, I'm running vault uh, 1.22. I'm gonna set up a vault server. Oops, sorry. So vault has this really cool thing called a built-in dev mode, which basically allows you to quickly spin up a vault server uh, using an in-memory database. And it's not, it's not secure or anything like that. It's totally meant just to help you learn and sort of get, uh, sort of test cool new features with vault. So in dev mode, we'll just launch that. See, there's a bunch of output. And then up here, you say you can see it says, hey, warning, we're in dev mode. Everything is stored in memory. Don't use this for production. Gives you, um, it initialized the, the key store and it unsealed it. And then it gives you sort of these tokens here. So what I'm gonna do is copy this root token. And then up in the top window here, I'll explain what this does in a sec. So I'm exporting a couple environment variables on uh, my test setup here. The first one is um, exporting a vault address. This basically tells the vault client, hey, here's how you can access vault. And another one is we're expo exporting the root token. Again, you wouldn't do this in production. You'd probably have some dedicated uh, account that you're gonna access it in, but today we're just gonna use root. Now, if I do vault status, you can see Awesome, we have a Vault environment set up. One thing that I typically like to do, sort of before I mentioned, hey, you know, when you're accessing secrets, you wanna sort of set up um, auditing and logging. So what I'm gonna do is, I'll just show you uh, this quickly. So if I do Vault audit list, it says, hey, there's no auditing devices enabled. And then I'm gonna set up an audit log. And so basically any Vault, sort of actions are gonna be logged into this audit log file. And if I just uh, say tail that, you can see there's a bunch of sort of, obviously this looks like uh, just JSON blob or something like that. But typically what people will do is they'll export this to say something like elk, or maybe you're using Splunk or you wanna to go to syslog. And then you can sort of incorporate all these audit logs into your normal workflow. All right, so for database credential rotation, uh, to sort of demo how that would look, we actually need to fire up a database. So I'm gonna use Docker to fire up a Postgres database. Uh, let me do that here. There's sort of one handy trick that, uh, if you're using Docker, maybe you don't know about it, this dash dash RM uh, flag here. Basically what this does is when you're firing up a Docker container, uh, a lot of times you'll have like old test containers lying around and stuff like that. But if you use that dash dash RM, uh, after we shut down this container, it'll just blow it away. So it sort of cleans up after yourself, which is personally, I really like that feature. Uh, so we're passing in a couple of uh, environment variables to this. One we're saying, hey, for the root account, we wanna set the root password. I'm just saying this because uh, I'll show you why in a second. So if we do Docker PS, you can see, hey, we have our container up and running. And then, um, I want to exec into this container. So, all right. So now we have, um, we're inside the container. I'm going to log in with root. And then if I do just list the users, we can say, all right, there's only one account and it's root. So what I want to do is I'm going to set up a vault demo account. And this will be sort of the demo account that uh, we can connect with vault and we'll have Vault rotate the password uh, you know, once every 24 hours.
but we'll sort of force it a couple times just so, to prove that it works. So, so what I did here was uh, I created a vault demo account with the password, my password, and then I granted uh, privileges on it. All right, so let's, uh, you can see, hey, the account exists. And then uh, we're good here. Let's get out of here. All right, so, so now we have the sort of database component set up. Let's configure Vault to rotate that uh, Vault demo password. So I'm going to turn on the um, database engine. I'm just going to copy and paste these commands because they're pretty long, and then I'll just sort of walk through what they're doing. All right, so for this uh, block here, so when we're asking Vault to say, hey, I want you to rotate this password for this account, we need to give Vault access to the database so it can actually go in and run the commands to rotate that password. So in the background, Vault has sort of a queue that it's, uh, that it's sort of triggering off of to say, you know, based on the time that we say uh, in the example here, it'll be 24 hours. So it, Vault's keeping track of when it should rotate these keys. And the sort of important thing here is that uh, we're giving it a database connection string. Uh, we're using the Postgres database plugin. Right now, this feature works with Postgres and MySQL. And then uh, we're giving it the uh, root account and then the root password. Not very secure, but uh, not very secure root password in this case, but obviously this is a demo. All right, then um, we're going to say we need to tell uh, Vault what kind of uh, script we want to run to rotate this password. So I'm just going to create a quick little SQL file here. And I'm going to say, hey, I want you to alter the user. Um, you know, we're using a template here, which is pretty cool. So you could uh, basically put in any values you want. Maybe you wanted to do something special. Uh, this gives you flexibility in, in that way. All right. Then we're going to write this um, script into the database for our Vault demo account. Um, so basically, we're saying, hey, I want you to rotate uh, the Vault demo account every 24 hours. This is in seconds. So maybe you wanted to do it every 30 days. You just figure out what that is and go for it. Now we can, um, we can read this out. Typically, when I'm doing things, I like to do a step, and then I like to just verify that, hey, it actually worked. Uh, great. So you can see, hey, we're going to rotate the uh, Vault demo account, and then we're going to use this sort of SQL statement to do that. And then it says 24 hours here. Um, then we want to set up a Vault policy that allows us to actually read this uh, credential out of the database after we rotate it. So I'm just going to create another little uh, policy file here basically says, hey, I want to uh, read this uh, static credential, and I'm going to give it the capability to read. All right, then I'm going to write that policy into the database. And when I'm saying database, I, uh, I mean vault here. All right, so everything at this point should be set up. So let's uh, create a token that uh, is based off that policy. Great, and now let's... Um, so what I did here is you could sort of think of this like uh, if you wanted to automate this, you might have a say a backup script and it's going to hit Vault. It says, "Hey, give me a token that I want to uh, connect to Vault with um, to pull out this uh, credential." So that's what we did here. So we'll use this token here, and then um, I'll explain this here. Oops. So I'm passing in the Vault token, and then I'm saying, hey, Vault, I want to read this database credential for that education account. Great. So you can see here's the uh, Vault demo account, and then here's the password that, that Vault generated. So behind the scenes here, Vault went to the database, rotated that credential, and then gave us a new one here. Um, I guess maybe just to sort of prove that that happened, let's, uh, you can use this command here to basically force uh, rotation of that credential. And then um, let's rerun this uh, command to grab the token. And then we can just sort of visually compare that uh, it was actually rotated. Great. So you can see um, the password before, 
we force rotated it and then uh, we rotated it again. So why would you want to do this? Well, say you had a, a database uh, backup script that you're a sysadmin, you create this script and you hard code your username and password in there. And then uh, maybe accidentally you upload that to GitHub. Well, that if we set the TTL on this password rotation period, like small enough, you know, a lot of those sort of security issues just go away in that the credentials are invalid by the time they, they're exposed. So maybe if you know, hey, the, ba the backup's gonna take 30 minutes, maybe you only set a TTL in here for a few minutes. So, you know, your script connects and then the process is running and then it disconnects and those credentials are no longer valid. Um, so we can also connect to the Docker container. So let me do Docker and just sort of verify that, hey, we can actually log in with that uh, credential here. Um, so then I'm gonna connect to the database. I'm just gonna copy this username and password. Boom. Now we're logged in and you know I can, then you can do your uh, actions in there. So that sort of simulates how a workflow, how the workflow might go there. So that's it for the database credential rotation demo. Um, you know, uh, this is sort of a tool that you'll just have in your toolbox. If the need arises, if, if you have this kind of stuff, then, you know, this is an option. There's also dynamic secrets where, say for example, um, will generate a custom username and a custom password. So uh, it's not always tied to a particular account, but uh, we we had a community feedback where there, uh, folks were asking, hey, could we just have a static username where we rotate the password for compliance issues? And so that's why this is in here. All right, so I wanted to move on to the RAF storage backend. Personally, this uh, I really like this technology and that um, it sort of leverages what we've done with uh, Console and Nomad, where they utilize the same RAF technology, and now we can incorporate it into, uh, into Vault. So let me just sort of explain how this works. So with a typical Vault cluster, you'll have, um, say, probably three nodes. Uh, you know, an active node, and then you'll have a couple HA standby nodes so that if, uh, you know, one of the machines goes down, you still have access to the Vault and you can still... Uh, grab all your secrets. But behind the scenes, Vault has these things called storage plugins, where basically all of your data is sitting in a highly available sort of file system, or in this case, console. Um, if you jump over to the docs, you can sort of see, you know, hey, there's a ton of different storage backends for, uh, you know, how you've configured your environment. Maybe you're in AWS and you want to use, um, you know, DynamoDB, or maybe you're in Google Cloud and you want to use Spanner. Uh, a lot of folks use console, but when you're looking at this, now it's sort of two systems you need to maintain. You need to maintain vault and you need to maintain console. Uh, for a lot of folks, this isn't a problem because they want to leverage, um, you know, the service discovery and, you know, service registry. There's a lot of benefits to running these things uh, together. But when you use this um, wrapped uh, storage backend, all of a sudden your, your cluster starts to look like this where we've actually incorporated the storage right into Vault itself. So now you get, I should mention this is a tech preview, we're just sort of flushing this out, but uh, now the Vault cluster can do leader election on its own, which means you have a highly available cluster with storage built in. So the way this works is you'll bootstrap one node, um, then you'll attach other nodes into this cluster and they start to replicate all this data between themselves. So if one node in the cluster goes down, um, the other two are there, and you know if you rejoin another node, then they'll sync over the database and away you go. There's also not a limit to having, say, three nodes in here, but uh, yeah, pretty cool feature. And since it leverages what uh, we've done with console, you know, console, uh, we have proven use cases with tens of thousands of nodes hitting this type of architecture. So this code is, uh, I'd say, very well baked and uh, you know proven at high scale. So um, just to sort of demo what this looks like, I uh, fired up three VMs on Google Cloud. Um, I just called them Vault Server 1, 2, and 3. And then at the command line here, um, let me just sort of show you. So I'll just run Vault Status. 
So you can see I'm running Vault version 1.2.3. So this webinar is about Vault 1.2, but there's been a couple uh, feature improvement releases. Things are typically moving pretty fast. So you'll see like bug releases and feature improvements and stuff like that happening pretty quick. So you can see HA is enabled and we have a highly available cluster. And um, actually maybe I'll just run this on the other three nodes here, just to sort of prove that they're all chat with each other. You can see this node is in a standby node. Uh, I think this one is too. Yeah, great. So what this looks like is it's actually something like this, right? So we have our, our node that's our leader, and then we have our two uh, standby nodes. Actually, this is leader and follow techno like terminology, but it's uh, basically the same. So what we can do is we can uh, dump the raft config. And now you can see, hey, we're using the raft storage backend, and we have uh, sort of three servers that are in a, running in a highly available mode. So if, say, one of these uh, servers gets blown away, um, the other two will seamlessly take over, and you don't uh, need to worry about anything. So how can I sort of prove that this uh, actually works? What I was thinking is um, we'll just uh, throw an API key for a webinar with some random data into the uh, database running on Vault. All right, and then we'll go and like pull, pull this data off one of the other nodes. Awesome, so you can see it was uh, seamlessly synced over and all the storage backend is built right into Vault. It's not using any external storage. Not that that's a problem, but uh, you know it just sort of lessens the the ops overhead, especially if you don't need a you know you don't need to maintain or have ops personnel trained on one of these uh, other storage backends, which is uh, pretty cool. Um, you know you can read about all this in the docs. I'll throw a slide up at the end that sort of has uh, references and stuff like that. Um, you can go and check out. All right. Um, Sort of for the identity tokens, I think maybe in the interests of time, we'll just chat about that. Um, so we have uh, identity tokens here. So in Vault 1.1, we released uh, basically OpenID integration or OIDC. This allows you to authenticate to Vault with uh, your GitHub username and password or say uh, your Google account. And you know you can basically link up your identity with that, and then you can use uh, any Vault resources that your policy allows. But uh, with Vault 1.2, we want to take that a little bit further, and we added um, sort of OpenID or OIDC compliant identity tokens. This allows you to connect the Vault through an API and request a token that will be signed and valid. So a use case might be, hey, I have uh, two microservice apps or something like that. And you know, especially if you're in a container environment, it's highly dynamic, things are moving up and down all over the place. Uh, and it's you can't really uh, base authentication uh, off, uh, say, like a, an IP address or something like that, right? So you have microservice A that wants to chat with B. How does B know that uh, it's actually chatting with the person it's supposed to be? So you could have application A hit vault and say, hey, give me an identity token that uh, the receiver application can go verify that I actually am who I say I am. And then uh, that's basically how it would flow. So you can basically go through and obviously you need to integrate this with your application. So this is more, much more sort of a, a developer uh, type tool. Uh, you can go and basically configure your infrastructure to do that and away you go. Um, before, that's basically what I had for the demo section. What I was thinking is I just want to show you a few more sort of useful links that uh, I personally use all the time. And then uh, maybe we'll kick it back to Mitch and we'll do the question and answer uh, section. So um, if you're over on the Vault website, uh, up in the header here, you'll see uh, learn. And if you go into learn, there's basically a, uh, I don't know how many there is, probably over a hundred sort of labs that you can walk through. So if we say, uh, you know, maybe using your first secret, and then you can see sort of step-by-step -step instructions with uh, full code examples. 
uh, that you can sort of work through on your own. Uh, this sort of comes back to how we set up that dev server before. You can set up a, one of these labs, walks you through setting up a dev server, then you can configure your first secret, dynamic secrets, all that sort of stuff. And you know, this one is uh, very much uh, targeted towards folks who haven't, who have no vault experience. But if you kind of go down to here into the operations and developer tasks, you know, it goes pretty deep into, um, you know, maybe I want to integrate with Kubernetes or something like that. How, what is an architecture, and then how do I actually do that? Um, you know, I, I work on Vault all the time, and I even come to this site, and I'm looking through these code snippets because it's uh, it's tough to keep some of this stuff in your memory, and you know, you have a complete guide. So I can't really, uh, I can't recommend this site enough. I, I use it all the time. Another thing um, is the community uh, uh, sort of forums and uh, various announcement lists. If you're looking to keep up to date with what's happening with Vault, or you know, you want to know about certain features, or maybe you uh, want us to integrate with a certain technology or workflow or something like that, definitely hit us up on IRC. There's announcement lists so, so you can be updated to the latest versions, um, as well as training and stuff like that. All right, Mitch, um, that's pretty much it for me. I wanted to thank everyone, um, and we'll open her up for questions. Yeah, uh, like, thank you, Justin. Like he said, uh, we are now opening up for questions, and I've got a few that have already been asked here. So, Justin, I'll just jump right in. Um, uh, first question was maybe a little, little suggestion, a little question uh, for more resources. Um, there were one, the dev, the tutorials to the this, asker seemed like they were dev only or they were looking for real production ready tutorials with best practices or something close to that um and maybe maybe your dev maybe you running in dev mode was pretty close to production just kind of let us know yeah sure so the reason i fired up it in dev mode is just so that uh you know if you wanted to sort of play around with this on your own but the workflow is totally the same whether you had um uh, this running in production, say you had a production cluster up and running already, you know, you'd follow the exact same workflow. Actually, I should mention that, um, let me just get out of this for a sec. Um, if you sort of hit up the um, learning site, there is the database credential rotation uh, tutorial. And this basically walks you through what the architecture looks like, and it'll guide you through creating all the policy, and it wa walks you through it step by step. So if you're looking for um, the place to learn about this, just, uh, uh, I think I listed it in the references here. Yeah, I did. Uh, but this is basically the lab you wanna go through and that is a production ready use case. Cool. Um, one was kind of a small question. Someone was asking back in the, um, in the first demo with these uh, database credentials, um, they were asking what was the a capital A one A prefix in the generated password. What did that mean? Um, you know what? That's a good question. I don't have the answer. I imagine it's probably. Uh, I'd have to look into the code to see why that it does that. But it's. Uh, I I don't know. It's probably just some sort of prefix to maybe let you know that it's dynamically generated. But. Uh, Honestly, this is going to be totally automated. You're going to have scripts that are connecting to Vault. You're not probably going to do this like at the command line yourself. So I don't have the answer, but uh, I'd probably have to dig into the code and look. Mm -hmm. But my gut says it's just some sort of prefix, uh, just in case the random uh, data is a little funky or something. Okay. And next question was, uh, or, um, you know, this may not be as clear cut since it's still tech preview, but someone was asking how you might how you might migrate from a console backend in Vault the new integrated storage with Raft. That's a good question. Um, I'd say for right now, uh, this is still pre tech preview, so uh, don't do that. <laughs> like if you want to test it out and see what it would uh, like look like and how it perform, uh, I'd say yeah, you want to go and do that, but don't definitely don't use this in production yet because we're still working on it. But uh, um, I'd say you probably, I know there are database uh, migration scripts sort of kicking around. Off the top of my head, I can't uh, remember what it's called, but if you just Google it, like uh, uh, Vault uh, uh, sort of like backup and restore or uh, Vault migration, you'll find a bunch of different uh, sort of walkthroughs and tutorials on that. 
and away you go. Also, if you're an enterprise customer, just ping your sales rep or um, uh, like SE, and they'll, they'll definitely help you out with that too. Perfect. Actually, you could probably even use the, uh, sorry, one sec here, the community like ask on IRC and they'll have that information too. All right, and for uh, for the raft integrated storage, someone was asking, uh, do you have uh, auto and seal on a node restart or does it need to be done separately? Yeah, good eye. <laughs> so let me show you what the uh, config file looks like here. So the quick answer for this demo, I didn't do auto unseal, but uh, so cat, uh, alt. So right here, you can see there's no auto unseal, but there's nothing to say you can't have a block in here that uh, maybe you're running in AWS or Google Cloud, that you can't hit their uh, HSM to do auto unseal. So that will be like a supported use case that you can do auto unseal. So uh, for anyone who doesn't understand the question or maybe i'll explain sort of the context here um uh, so we set up a, a cluster that looks like this say um node 2 gets blown away and then we fire it back up what's going to happen is the vault is sealed and this is going to cause a problem because um it might require well it will require manual intervention of someone going in there and unsealing the vault so when you talk about auto unseal Basically, we want to have this node, as soon as it's available and it rejoins the cluster, we want to have it uh, go and you know, connect with a, a mechanism to auto unseal the vault and basically unlock it and you know, properly join that node back to the cluster. So yeah, I just use a cloud HSM and away you go. Or if you have a HSM on site or something like that, then you can do that too. Cool. Yeah, and the rest of the questions so far actually aren't quite related to the demo, but since we've got a lot of time, if, if you want to direct people to the right resources for some of these, um, uh, someone asked specifically related to Azure Key Vault, how does Vault have, uh, does Vault have the ability to create policies and policy guardrails for resources? Well, that's a good question. Um... Honestly, off the top of my head, I don't know. Like, uh, so you're sort of saying, hey, I want to have a policy in Vault that will propagate out to Azure. Uh, maybe if we could clarify that. Mm -hmm. I know if you go in here, uh, Secrets Engine, Azure. So if you if uh, you can just Google like Azure Secrets Engine and Vault, you'll find all the documentation in here and. Uh, let's see if we have the, uh, it's probably tough to answer this on the fly, but um, mm -hmm. I, I'd say your best bet is to probably ask, uh, like read this page and, and look, and then um, if you can't get an answer there, then I'd probably hit the community forms or just uh, maybe Google around a bit. Okay. Another question came in about uh, the, uh, the raft storage. So they were asking, is there uh, the concept of ACLs, ACLs, uh, like there is in uh, on console uh, in production, we, this person, locks down access to the vault path using ACL tokens? Um, honestly, I don't know the answer to that one. Uh, let's sort of look through the docs here. You know, the just sort of the... Um, initial integration of raft storage we just wanted to do a like proof of concept i imagine a lot of those sort of features were coming down the pipe but right now i i would say that probably isn't supported but uh you know if that's something you want we'll definitely i'll jot down a note and i'll chat with the folks about it just one second yeah great thank you cool um, and then back to a few other questions a lot of people a couple questions were all around the same thing asking um what are like recommended best, where do you find recommended best practices for using Vault with AWS? Yeah, sure. So um, if you go, if we go back to, actually, let's just Google it. I'll show you how to do it, how I would do it. Uh, Vault, learn, AWS. And then you'll have, um, uh, basically, if you go to the learn site, There'll be a, uh, a ton of different uh, resources on, on, you know, running Vault in AWS. Um, and a lot of these will have, um, 
uh, sort of like recommended architectures and stuff like that that probably don't even apply to say AWS. It could be just here's the recommended architecture. So here's a recommended architecture for high availability with console. And then you basically apply that to uh, uh, AWS or Google Cloud or Azure or whatever. The only really thing that you probably would care about here is, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find the recommended architecture of running Vault highly available. And then as that previous question um, sort of stated, hey, I want to have auto unseal. So then you'll go, you know, you'll configure your highly available cluster and then you'll modify the config file to say, hey, you know what, to auto unseal this uh, vault, I want to hit the AWS HSM or say Google Cloud KMS or whatever. So that's pretty much, I'd, I'd focus on just what's the, what's the recommended architecture in general and then modify that slight piece for your particular cloud. That way it works across uh, any cloud provider that you have. Very cool. Um, someone did put in uh, comments to another person's question saying that uh, in the questions around uh, Azure Secrets, Azure Key Vault, um, they were saying there that some gotchas in that process are discussed already, I think, in discuss.hashicorp.com, the forum that you were showing people to. So yeah, definitely go to the forum and ask uh, search for those keywords and things like that, and you might find what you're looking for or be able to ask and find out. Um, awesome, thanks very much for doing that. There is one other Azure Key Vault question. How does Vault 1.2 interact with Azure Key Vault policies? I think we might have already chatted about that in that okay. uh, it's a quick answer. I don't know off the top of my head and I'd have to go look it up too. So, um, gotcha. uh, yeah, you can, I'd probably Google that one just because I don't know. I don't want to tell you something that uh, I don't know. Uh, another question, does Vault offer a snapshot agent similar to console for its inter new integrated storage? Yeah, so there will be a, a snapshot. Um, I think, let me go over to, uh, I think I had one of these pages, pages opened up here. So, uh, back on the learn site, if you go to, let me just pull this away here so you can see the URL. If you go to vault operations, raft storage, there's actually a guide here that walks you through how you can go and set up your own uh, sort of raft cluster uh, with vault and check it out. This one uses Terraform, um, but in here, uh, let me just search for say snapshots here. Yeah, raft snapshots for vault data recovery. So there's a whole section in here that talks about exactly what you're asking. So I imagine you could probably even use this for, I haven't tested this myself, so I don't know if it'll work, but maybe you could do like a backup and restore. Um, you know, that might even help for that previous question of, uh, you know, data migration, but I probably have to think through how that would work. Yeah. Cool. And I think this will be the last question. Uh, this one was just um, kind of asking for the best resources about app roles. They're asking what are app roles, how do you use them to read secrets? So probably kind of point them to the best resources on that. Yep, sure. I personally, like if uh, I wanted to do this and I didn't know the answer, I'll just show you what I like I would do. So uh, I do uh, vault app role. Um, and so the, the two resources that I point you to is our online docs and then our uh, learning pages. So I know there's, uh, and um, this is sort of the two results here. Uh, let me just open them up. So the first one is the docs on app roll. And then if you look down here, you'll find an app roll and then you just look for the learn HashiCorp. So boom, this doc will talk about like app roll in general, how it all works. And then you can find very the sort of two or three app role related learning labs. And you can just self paced go and learn all this stuff. And I find just by uh, sort of going through these tutorials in say like a dev environment, you're gonna learn all the inner workings and all that type of stuff really quickly. And the kind of cool thing about the learn site is it says like, hey, estimated time to complete, 10 minutes. So, you know, maybe you grab a coffee, you read through the, the app role docs, then you go and work through the lab, in a half an hour, you have a pretty good understanding. That's sort of my workflow for a lot of this type of stuff of uh, when people ask questions is, hey, just go Google it, find the documentation and find the learning lab and you're totally set for pretty much anything with Vault. Cool. 
Well, uh, that is all the questions that we have uh, asked of us in the question box here. So we'll wrap things up. Thanks so much, Justin. Thanks to everyone who submitted questions. I hope everybody enjoyed today's webinar, has a better understanding of Vault 1.2. For more webinars, you can visit our website at hashcorp.com slash events. And to view the archive of previous webinars, uh, check out hashicorp.com slash resources. And there you can see a little filter button on the side and hit uh, webinars to filter just by those. Finally, as I mentioned at the beginning, this webinar was uh, recorded. So uh, we'll make the recording available uh, on the HashiCorp resource library after the processing is done, typically in a day or two. So we'll also email a link to the recording uh, for everyone who registered. Uh, have a great day. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks everyone, see ya.